Alrighty, let's see if this works. Hello everyone, this is Dion Soul. I hope everyone is doing well. And as you see before you, you are looking at the Premier 1A by Carinado. And uh, this airplane is a Carinado product, so I'm not going to go into overly detail about Carinado airplanes because most of you know that Carinado is lots and lots of eye candy, which this airplane has uh, very much so. Uh, the reason why I decided to get the uh, Premier One is because I was flying. Um, I'm flying with with FS Economy, as you see in the uh, text uh, above you, or in the, the the icon up there, right below my uh, my logo. And I wanted something faster. And so what I'm doing is I'm having to limit my speed in this airplane, but I am uh, using it for FS Economy. I'm my, my alias or the airplane in FS Economy is a little bit different than this one, but I'm working my way up to get to this one. This is a seven-passenger aircraft, which you'll see. Um, not much to report on the outside. This is kind of a mini review. Just kind of just really brush over it because Carinado is is big and they set in their ways and uh, Carinado is what you see is what you get type of developer and so you get some updates every now and then once in the blue moon sky uh, or if it's just so much where it breaks the airplane then they fix it. Um, right off the bat I want to start off by saying what I did notice uh, right off the bat is if you mouse I don't have my mouse turned on here dang it uh, let me get my mouse on real quick I'll stall here while I'm getting my mouse turned on um, okay now my mouse is on uh, if you mouse over here to your typical uh, Carinado um, uh, you know a menu thing there's a I don't know if it's if it's new for this airplane or not but you do have the ability to get rid of this for your screenshots or whatever and what you do is you just you can see how it disappeared over here in the bottom left hand uh, corner uh, normally they're static like this and that's all you ever see and you know you're carrying out a product right off the bat but uh, you can use your mouse wheel now to actually make it disappear and it, you can barely see a little bit of, of a line right there to indicate hey there's where you're uh, uh, there's where your, your menus are. So I thought that was a nice addition to Carinado. I'll have to try this and see if my other Carinado products that I have. I, I bitch and moan it. I have a love-hate relationship with Carinado. Carinado, um, I, I have quite a few of their airplanes. And I bitch and moan and complain about them, why they're not as detailed as other independent developers. And, but even though I know why, it's because they've spread themselves out so thin that they don't devote the attention to their airplanes like they're, you know, like the other developers do. And um, so, you know, that's, that's a topic for another time. And so that's why you get what you get with Carinado products. Um, I... But again, it's still the airplane is not bad. Carinado is not a bad developer. They just, you know, have their have their quirks. But anyway, and this airplane is no exception. Uh, they don't have this airplane does not have the ability to double click or click on windows and doors and panels to be able to open up panels and be able to individually take off uh, like in uh, more modern airplanes or more updated uh, developers such as uh, airfoil labs where you can actually just go around and uh, click on every little detail um, you know click on the chocks and click on the, the pedos and all those other things uh, Carinado doesn't spend their time developing that kind of stuff so what you do is you just go over here to uh, and bring up the uh, uh, here and just remove all static elements and then there you go static elements have been removed and then boom all these static elements are gone uh, the static elements are in the normal places uh, where you'd find them, which would be around the pitot tubes and uh, around the engines and a couple of the places here and there. And, of course, the, um, of course the, uh, uh, the chocks. I'm having a brain fart there. So anyway, so like I say, overall, the fit and finish of the airplane is typical Carinado products. You get really, really close, and you see the, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, um, the thing to start the uh, the livery to start to deteriorate and uh, you know start getting a lot of blockies and stuff but that's that's typical that's, that's normal uh, if you want to access uh, like I say again the panels and whatnot they don't have any hit boxes on their aircraft so you do have to open up um, individually and uh, with their menu system which is 
kind of breaks the immersion a little bit, but it's not a disaster, you know. And you can see as I get close into here, you can see how the how everything starts to distort. So their quality, um, you know, when you start getting close to their to the airplane, it does the quality starts to degrade. Um, but that's that's typical for Carinado today. Uh, here in 2019, we do have other developers that are doing far uh, that that the, the, the detail remains uh, high. But that's neither here or there. That's just the way it is. And of course, this is my livery. Um, I did uh, paint this uh, yesterday. And so you can see we'll go around here and just take a look at the fit and finish of the airplane. You can see it has PB, PBR textures, uh, which is standard in all of airplanes today. Basically, if you do not have a PBR textures, then your airplane is not going to sell. So that's pretty much the way it is in today's world. And that's just, you know, that's what uh, developers have to deal with. Uh, the uh, nose... Um, the nose cone thing here does have uh, uh, front compartments, and I think when you fill it up full of passengers, uh, my mouse, uh, ever since the uh, version, uh, X-Plane of version 11 3.4, uh, I've been getting a sticky, um, a sticky mice now. My mouse starts to stick again, so that's why you see from time to time the mouse is sticking. Uh, you can see a, uh, a pilot in there. Uh, when you take off the uh, chocks, they automatically put the pilots in there. I kind of wish that... Uh, I would have the ability to be able to add the, um, be able to add the uh, pilot or not, but unfortunately uh, you don't. But that's okay. You know, it is what it is. Um, we do have the uh, GPU. Uh, you can. They do a lot of the X plane stock. Uh, one thing I do like about uh, uh, Carinado is they do use a lot of the X plane stock. Um, uh, Buttons. So if you if you click on if you go to X plane and you bind a key, that's for the GPU uh, on your uh, on your your flight control equipment. It can come out and there you can see it right there. And so which is cool, you know, which which is good. Uh, in order to open up the the, the main door, of course you got to use the menu system, and of course it comes out. Now, however, once you let's go ahead and get inside in here, uh, and you can see the uh, the the you know, the the Texturing, they say these are 4K textures, but um, unfortunately, you can see when you start getting close to the aircraft how it starts to degrade big time, and uh, which is unfortunate. Maybe it's 4K inside here because <laughs> it does look nice in here. It doesn't look nice inside the interior. Again, for a single uh, single pilot aircraft, you can carry seven passengers in here. So with FS economy, that's probably going to be pretty good. I mean, if you get 10, um, 10 would be a little bit better. But uh, if you had a 10-passenger aircraft, and then that way you can have uh, nine passengers, which is your single, um, I believe I've been understanding correctly from people that that is the maximum you're allowed to have is nine passengers with a single operation a pilot airplane. Anything after that, 10 passengers or more, you have to have, uh, um, you have to have a co-pilot. So. I'm not, don't hold me to that because I'm not for sure on that. Uh, clickables down in here. There is no clickables anywhere. Um, looks like you could have this as seat or whatever. I don't know if this is supposed to be the potty or what this is supposed to be. That would be kind of a weird place to have a potty. But So that must, that must be for hanging. Yeah, oh, the the it is. It's for hanging uh, uh, clothes and whatnot because there's the hanger right there. So that's the hanger. And then, of course, a little galley thing right here. None of these are clickable and openable. Um the uh, and there's the cockpit right there. We'll take a look at the cockpit here in just a second. Uh, all the uh, lights are on gimbals, so you can move around the lights, uh, no problem. Uh, so you can see it right there as I'm moving it right now. The light with my mouse, uh, which is pretty cool. All right, that's that's cool. I mean, I'm again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in in here at all, you know, in the back. But every now and then you'll come back and you know, that sort of thing. Uh, the shades, uh, so far, all the shades work. Um, they work just fine, and then of course you got the uh, pullouts for the uh, uh, for the trade tables or the tables, uh, which is cool. That looks nice, and you got to see the reflections, how it's reflecting off of the the windows and doors and whatnot. The hit box to close it's kind of on the table itself, which is cool. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, seats don't do anything uh, typical. That's that's normal. I mean most most uh, airplanes do not have uh, articulating seats at all. Uh, they don't move around and whatnot, which so I'm not tripping on that at all. Uh, back here in the back, 
you can hear this right here is actually your luggage compartment and there is no potty back here uh, I think in the real airplane there would be a potty right here in the back so you'd have your privacy um, along with your uh, luggage because I think the uh, this right here is the uh, uh, rear baggage door right oh I'm incorrect so the baggage door is on the other side of this of this uh, bulkhead so yeah you would have the potty right here then and I, I would have a potty right here and I would have like a little wash hand wash basin or whatever if but that's all weight and weight is as you know is is a big thing with airplanes too much weight causes problems uh so we'll go ahead and get on the cockpit in here and we'll go ahead and take a seat and here we go we got the collins pro line uh aviation package uh this is the package i would like to have installed in the uh, airfoil labs uh king air 350 and then that way they can call it the king air 350i so maybe one day uh Airfoil Labs would do that for the King Air 350, and I think I just said Air King. Sorry about that. I said that backwards. Dyslexic coming, setting in right there. Um, so the King Air 350, and so that would be nice for them to to have that in there. And uh, you got your normal window reflections, instrument reflections, yada yada yada. Uh, and you'll notice right here too as well that I have installed the uh, GTN 750. Um, the airplane comes out of the box with the standard X-Plane 11 uh, FMS, which everybody knows is crap. Uh, nobody likes it, and uh, except for the developers. Um, and even them, I don't even know if they really like it or not. I don't know. I know they had to have something, but uh, it's just not very intuitive. And uh, Laminar has to do a lot of work in uh, making uh, their FMS attractive to people. So that's why we have... Uh, other people making uh, making their own and with GTN 750 uh, it makes the flight in, in, entering the flights extremely handy and I know most people say well that's not real and it doesn't bring it up to the real world and that's true but you do have to have some concessions uh, between uh, real world aviation and flight simulation and I have no problem with having this as a concession to be able to have the uh, GTN 750 at my disposal because it's a far better uh, product than uh, the standard X-Plane 11 uh, FMS. So, you know, that's that's why I like it so much. It's so much easier to install. All right, so we'll go ahead and get up in here and we'll get ready to go. Again, articulating, uh, um, you know, lights and whatnot, uh, lighting packages up here above, and... Uh, We'll go ahead and turn on the beacon and navigation light. And we'll go ahead and turn on the battery power. And we'll go ahead and get this FS Economy flight together. Now, if you want to pick up the xplane.org, over at the xplane.org store, if you want to pick up the Karen Auto uh, 390 Premier 1, it is sitting over here at the xplane.org store for $39. Uh, if you want to wait, you could probably wait until Thanksgiving if uh, if it's not, uh, well, not a hot button for you to purchase and just wait for Thanksgiving. And then uh, that's when Karen Auto will do their sales and they'll probably knock five, ten bucks off of it maybe if you're lucky. And uh, and get it for less money because again, Carinado, like I said at the start of the video, uh, what you see is what you get. It's very very, it's very very rare that Carinado will um, uh, add more features and uh, and have their airplanes. Uh, the uh, um, Phenom 100 that I have. Um, that airplane is extremely old now, and uh, I have. I have problems with that airplane, and so that's why I don't fly it anymore. And that's what you do with Carinata products. You fly them until they don't work anymore, and then you move on to something else. So anyway, so we'll go ahead and get set up and ready to go here. And uh, as you can see, what's a little different than most airplanes that I've seen is that you have this uh, lift or dump. And um, lift or dump is basically it retracts the uh, flaps, or I'm sorry, the, uh, uh, the uh, speed brakes and it just retracts the speed brakes and then you're able to have your speed brakes to keep your airplane on the ground uh, once you land because uh, the airplane tends to want to take back off again um, at which is a I mean the airplane's a great airplane and the, 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 the dynamics of the airplane is really really good and that's what it does and so you put deploy that thing and then it makes it so it basically brings up the, the you know the the uh, speed brakes and just keeps the airplane you know to the ground 
And so that's what that's for, and uh, that sort of thing. So we'll go ahead, and now it does use you do use your mouse. Um, you can just click on these but switches, or you can use your mouse wheel to turn things on and off. And it's and when you're doing the mouse wheel thing, it is kind of f uh, finicky sometimes. So just a little FYI on that. It's not a big deal. I mean, it's just something you get used to. Another thing that I found is that like right here, the cutoff. Um, what I have done is I have bound my SciTech equipment so I can, you have a, you have a lock and an unlock. Matter of fact, let me spin my, my camera, my angle around here so you can see it. And you can see these right here. These are your locks and your unlocks. And, uh, of course now I just unlocked it. And now you can have full motion of it. And then if, now I just locked them back. And so now it's going to come back. I'm using my SciTech, uh, th throttle quadrant so I can. Uh, unlock those locks to be able to have it and then once I am uh, satisfied then I can go back and lock it it's not perfect but it, it gets the job done so but so and it works when it wants to <laughs> There it goes now it's just locked in place it's a it's a logic thing it's something that uh, Carinato did and uh, it's still going to, there it goes. Now it caught up. And now it's only allowing me to go from cut off to idle. And, um, but if you unlock them, now you're able to go free flowing and then it'll only stop at idle. So now we're in, now we are in position to where um, it will uh, be ready to, for, to start the engines with because we're at that position right now. It's kind of finicky as you saw right there. It's finicky. But once you get, you know, it works once it gets going and whatnot. So we are ready to go with that. Is that a, is that something that they could have uh, avoided? Yes, uh, it could have been. And uh, but you know it is what it is. Would you put that in the sink for me, please? I greatly appreciate it. Um, and uh, over here uh, we got ourselves the um, uh, ECU, and then we got our ignitions, where you can have your ignitions on all the time. And arm, so then that way when you're in altitude, uh, but uh, we don't have to worry about that right now. Uh, power, or, or of course, right now you see that the uh, this is gone. So there, there is gone. Um, one thing I did notice is, or that uh, I actually was uh, watching another person's video that you have the ATC ident because people were having a problem uh, with the ATC ident, so you have that on the yoke itself, or if you have the GTN 750. Like I do, you just have it on the GTN 750, so you get around the fact that you don't have ident capabilities. Uh, that was an issue with the initial release of the uh, uh, Premier One, but since then that has been patched. This is version 1.2, by the way, of the airplane. Um, and so some things that I was not privy to uh, has already been fixed, and you know I, I I don't see a problem. So airplane flies great. I mean we'll have a problem. You'll see it once we get in the air here. So for out further ado, let's go ahead and uh, let's get get going here. And I'll just go ahead and just turn everything on. Uh, we'll go ahead and get the uh, GPU going here. Then we'll just minimize that. Get that out of the way. And we'll turn the battery on. You can tell I have some serious, <coughs> excuse me, mouse issues. Um, which, like I say, with X-Plane 3.4, I've been having nothing but mouse issues, which is unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. And okay, that's uh, de-icing for this. Then we don't need any of that because we're on the ground. Anti-skid. Don't even know if I really, really need that right now. Uh, all this, just leave alone. Everything is fine. Fine, fine, fine. Leave all that alone. Uh, barometrics or uh, environmentals, leave all that alone. Uh, we'll go ahead. Once I'm ready, to, I, actually what I do is I start the airplane, get the airplane going with whatever the fuel is, and then I will activate what you see right here. Uh, then I will activate my uh, 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 my uh, my FS economy last. So we'll go ahead and get this done. 
and we'll go ahead and get ready to program the FMS and where we're going today is we are going to go to um, and by the way there's where you can get at the explain.org I think I didn't show that to you um, but here you get the uh, the Carinato premiere at the explain.org and there it is or you can go to Carinato's own website and get it from them directly okay so here is our flight plan not much and so it's uh, K brew one to far and that's it so let me see if I even have a K brew one where's K brew oh that's the um, tch, K brew one duh that is the uh, uh, departure K brew one there's K brew one and uh, you know what I didn't get the uh, runway I last I checked it was runway one four I believe one I'm sorry one two uh, let's go one two right because I have no idea I really need to far transition and that's it and it's just direct all the way to Fargo so I may have to change that. I have to load the uh, get the ATIS so we'll just leave it at that I mean it's a real short flight uh, we're talking 202 nautical miles and it's just a direct shot so um, real simple Real simple flight. Well, that takes care of that. Now, I, what I do need is I do need the uh, um, airport information. This is to which one? Indianapolis frequencies. The frequency in, and then I'll go ahead and. Uh, if I can get some audio out of the frequency and I am using my audio my audios here to be able to uh, get what what's going on so let's go ahead and turn everything on the avionics boom 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 because we are on GPU at the moment and I was expecting to hear the ATIS, and of course now I didn't because I'm recording. That's what happens. When you start to record, then nothing works. But when I'm just flying normal, no problems. I got I got no issues. That's just the way things are, you know. You know? Okay, our boost pumps. Dooka dooka dooka. And our uh Minneapolis. There you go. Minneapolis St. Paul I N T L information India. That's funny. You turn this off, which is supposed to be your nav one. Minneapolis and it works. Paul I -N -T -L information <laughs> India. Whatever, you know. Sixteen hundred Zulu weather. Wind light and variable. Fine, I'll just use this. Visibility more than ten. Sky conditions three thousand eight hundred scattered. Twenty five thousand scattered. And runway 315. three five. one eight. Dew point minus nine. Altimeter three zero one one. Arriving runway three five. Departing runway three five. Advise on initial contact you have India. So runway three five going to be way over there. So what I need to do is come around and use uh Minneapolis St. Paul I so I'm come over here India. Get whiskey and Delta Zulu. Wind light and variable visibility more than ten. Sky Take Delta or scattered, Charlie. 5,000 scattered. Temperature 18. Dew point minus 9. And just wind my way around. Three okay. zero one one. Arriving runway 17. Departing runway 17. Advise okay, on just initial contact close. you have. Oh, now we're, oh whoa, wait. 17 now. It just changed on me. 17 now. All right. Where's 17 at? Which one's this one? This three five. Minneapolis St. Paul INTL Information India. Sixteen hundred Zulu weather. Wind light and variable. Visibility more than ten. You can't decide. Sky conditions three thousand eight hundred scattered. Twenty five thousand scattered. Temperature one eight. Dew point minus nine. Altimeter three zero one one. Arriving runways three zero left. Three zero right. Departing runways three zero left, three zero right. Advise on initial contact you have India. Three zero left and three zero right. I think this is three five. 
Oh, there's three zero left and three zero right. Well, you know what? We're going to go three zero left because that's the closest one to us. That way, I can just go right down there and boom, boom, boom. Okay. Makes things easy. Minneapolis, St. Paul, INTL, Infra. Okay. Now let's turn that off so I can let the noise. All right. So that's what we'll, well, that's what we'll do. If I can get my mouse back. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and start these engines, and uh, we'll get on our way. Well, first we'll go ahead and uh, start the engines, and then I'll then I'll click on we'll get on the we'll get this going. So first button, boom. That's all you do to start the engines. Let's take a coffee for the working man. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't notice that the uh, video was all uh, discombobulated there. Now we know where we're going. Basically, what I'll do is I just keep the speed under 280 knots, uh, true airspeed. Um, I think uh, 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 FS Economy has a grace speed like 20 or, th or 20 or 50 knots. You know, give or take on the true airspeed, and uh, then you don't get flagged for going too fast. You know, using a, you don't have a 170. You know, you don't have a big airplane. You know, when, when your alias is a 172, so um, they uh, do that by uh, uh, having a little bit of a grace, but not too much. All right, let's make sure the generator is working, and it is. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sneeze again. And now we'll start engine number engine number one. Not much to see there. I think the engine sounds are kind of too quiet for my taste. I think the qu engine sounds need to be a little louder. But, you know, it is what it is. It's it's not bad. It's just, just kind of too quiet. Go ahead and get rid of the uh, GPU. GPU is now gone. Yep, GPU is gone to verify. I guess it's because I'm so used to uh, prop prop aircraft where they're so noisy. All right, so we got batteries. We got our out. We got all of our uh, running right around 80 or so on our uh, amperage. So we're we're all they're all working like they're supposed to. Very good. And I that did have my uh, navigation lights on yesterday. Now this does not have taxi lights, but it does have recognition lights. And so I just turn on the recognition lights and take that as my taxi lights. No smoking, seat belts on, on. Um, I, all the lights for the cockpit or the uh, cabin are not necessary because it is daylight. I'm not going to do that. And uh, we'll go back over here to... Um, Go back. Well, that's to me. Hi, hi, everybody. There's me. Okay, there's me. And then uh, a quick, quick synopsis. This is what we're doing. We're just leaving over here at uh, uh, Minneapolis International Airport. The zippity doo dah, zippity day. And then uh, go right on over here to Fargo, uh, North Dakota, and uh, hit hit the last waypoint right there, far. And then boom, just go right on in. And the runway is 310, and the winds are at 261. So if this airport has a, I don't know, airport diagram. I've never been there, so I don't know. Okay, so 26. So it looks like we're probably landing right here. Probably landing at runway 27. 800 foot runway, or 800 foot, uh, 6,000 foot runway. I should be able to get down. If not, I'll just go around, then I'll land on the big big runway and then have a uh, you know just have a crosswind 
uh, what would the crosswind be? What did the uh, it say? It said 261. Oh, that's the time. Oh, it's variable at 3 knots. So it could have me land anywhere. Okay, never mind. I was looking at the wrong thing on the uh, on the information. Okay. So. Alrighty then. I did create orthos for this area. So we should have orthos most, if not all of the way. And then as far as FS economy goes, there is... There's FS. There's Fargo. There's my itinerary. Uh, you can see I have 151,000. I'm trying to build up my revenue so I can be able to get into the Premier One as my primary aircraft instead of using my current Piper uh, PA31T Cheyenne 2. That's what I'm currently rocking right now. Actually, the Piper, the only difference between the Piper Cheyenne and this airplane is the fact that um, the only difference between the two is the fact that this one right here is. Uh, turboprop and mine are the the premier one is a jet uh the uh, loadout as far as the passengers and the weight and everything is all about the same so what so i'm just trying to build my way and then get into a premier one i found one for 140 i found a, a, a step airplane which is the uh, citation mustang uh which is an exact uh actually i take that back as exact copy of uh the cheyenne just that it's a jet version but it's uh, it has less weight, and in, in, in regards to weight, it's a little bit less. Um, I might have to step into that because the Premier is is uh, eight hundred thousand, and uh, so it's going to be a while. I just want to be able to get that speed, be able to get that four hundred knots, the high high speed, to be able to get from point A to point B. So I might just jump into a to a, uh, a, a, a Mustang first, and then from the Mustang into the Piper, and be able to still use the Premier One as my as my airplane while I'm stepping to get into the Premier One as far as the uh, alias is concerned. And that's the challenge. That's the challenge with FS Economy. And that, that's what makes this FS Economy uh, uh, not, not a bad uh, economy module to have. And uh, there's a host of other things that FS Economy does. There's pros and cons to FS Economy, and uh, I've said them before. Um, so anyway, so like I said, so we've got that, that going on there. we got that going on there. That's me talking about this. So then let's go ahead and get back into the airplane. And let's get on our way. Release parking brake. And this is not a flight jobs flight because I don't want the, uh, com the uh, complex complexity of having both going right now. So we are going to go... Pull, pull, let's go just pull this up here. It just makes it easier on me. Um, I do have Reality XP. And uh, Reality XP. And of course, you're going to hear a dog in the background, and I can't do anything about it. Um, we'll just go ahead and go on over. And then we will uh, get up there. We're gonna, we are going to go to... Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and just go... Uh, fly on over here but this is out of the box X plane uh, and it looks pretty nice they did a pretty good job killing my frame rates though but other than that I see the altitude over there was uh, only uh, let's put it a thousand feet I am not using ATC this time around. I just want to get, you know, like I said, I'm just trying to build, build this up, and I'll get more in depth as I progress. But you can see the uh, the way the uh, screen is. I am using uh, uh, realistic XP, which is pretty good. I think it's all right. I'm not complaining. Not complaining at all. 
And I see I got somebody in the house watching me. So a big howdy to whoever is watching me in there. I'm looking at the chat there. They haven't responded yet, and that's okay. I hope you are doing well. This is a review, semi-review of the Premier 1A by Carinato. And uh, the airplane is a fun little airplane. Um, I'm liking it for my FS economy um, flights. Um, like I said previously, if you, I don't know when you came in, but uh, I am uh, trying to build the alias up to be able to have the um, Premier One as my primary f airplane uh, for FS economy. Uh, I'm finding with FS economy, uh, because of the limitations or the restrictions of having more than fly, five active jobs, you're just better off just by getting an airplane that's right around anywhere between uh, seven or ten or so, no more than ten, and, and you're fine. That's just the way it is. You know, anything more than that, then you, it creates more problems for you uh, in certain, you know, certain respects. So we'll go ahead and uh, that is reversers. Make sure my reversers are working. Reversers are working. Very, very good. And then lastly, we need to make sure that all my lights are on and everything. Those are all working. Good. Robes on. Everything is looking good. Okay, we got a light on. Why we got a light on here? Oh, parking brake. That's why. Yes, that's supposed to. And then we can go ahead and start. There we go. We've got our fuel loaded and we've got our passengers loaded for FS Economy. So we are good to go. Make sure there's nobody coming. No, nope, don't see anybody coming. This parking brake flaps one, which I really don't even, I don't think I even really need. Like I say, the engine sounds are a little quiet. Not too bad, but a little quiet. I'd like for them to be a little bit louder. So. And let's just take off and go. Fargo, North Dakota, here we come. North Dakota? Let me get out of the main city here so I can get some of my frame rates back. Altitude 24,000 feet. Altitude 24,000 feet. And there's Minneapolis right in front of us.
my, my mouse has stopped sticking. I'm in good shape. off and then go right to heading 121 and I did not do that. Oopsie. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to go like this instead. And then we're going to have it turn and I'll vector myself around. I'm too busy looking at hero shots and not paying attention to line. This is where they want me to go. See the vector point. So we'll turn to the vector point, make it happy. There. It does have a bank limiter on this airplane, but I have not been able to get it to work. We are climbing into the stars. Still learning the aircraft. A lot of things I don't know. But I'll get it eventually. But the orthos appear to be working. So, with Minneapolis that I uh, did this morning, which is good. Very cool. I see you got three people in the house. Well, hello, everyone. I appreciate you guys stopping by and saying hi. Like I said, I'm just sitting here learning these, this uh, Premier One and getting my uh, feet wet with it. I'm going to use it for my FS economy flights. It's a terrible, <laughs> terrible flyby. <laughs> That's not a bad not a bad looking airplane. Not a bad looking little airplane at all. I like it. It reminds me a lot of the Phenom one hundred. telling me, see I don't, I don't like what it's telling me to do here, it's telling me to vector over here but then I'm going to turn around and when I hit autopilot it's going to change the direction, but let me go over here to flight plan, we're going to get out of those vectors, let's go ahead and see if we can force this thing to activate this leg. Again, this isn't much of a, not to fine tune this. The 
somebody did mention in the forum saying, hey, why can't you have the uh, GTN 750 over, you know, two GTN 750s, uh, you know, and they're saying, oh, no, it's going to take too much work to do that. I mean, Carinata was making the excuses. It's just like, you know, I don't care about your excuses. Just, just do it. This is what we want. Make it happen. But they're not going to do it. So we're lucky we get one. And if it uh, if it didn't have the GTN 750, I was watching another streamer. Um, I think it was X Plane uh, 1972. I was watching his video on this airplane, and I texted him because he was talking about yeah, in the real aircraft you don't have a GTN 750. Of course, the video he was making all these uh, the patch 1.1 and 1.2 for this aircraft were not out at that time. And um, he said, you know, he texted me back and saying yeah, he says. You know, I have the GTN 750 installed as well now. But he's, at the time, the comment was made that, you know, it's the real airplane doesn't really have it. So, and of course, now I'm, when I'm streaming, I get, I get phone calls. Go figure, you know. So anyway, I will be right back uh, with the phone call. So actually, you know what? I'm just going to let it, uh, I'm just going to let it uh, go to voicemail. Call me back. Now well, let's see if we're starting to get close to our. Uh, think our GPS is going to work. Yeah, it looks like it's slowly. We see it coming down right here. So it's going to pick up the GPS here in a minute. Uh, Is making its turn. Very good. And my only problem is the damn sticking of my mouse. Let's explain version 3.4 R1. Back off of my power here. Like I said, because I am using uh, the the uh, alias, my airplane in the uh, FS economy is a different airplane than this one, and it's a lot slower. I have to uh, be mindful of that. I've got to keep my true airspeed right around 275 knots or so, and right now I'm doing 300. So, and it, Doing my fuel uh, gallons per hour down to like 35 or something gallons per hour, which will knock my speed back down to like 180 knots indicated. But that's okay. I just want to fly something different than what I normally fly, you know. We are currently, well, you can see the cutoff between one tile and another one. Unless that tile I didn't do, which I thought I did. But there's a, there's a prime example between orthos, with orthos, and without orthos. something too on this video that I have no voice uh, switch turned on and I need to turn that off because I'm actually talking to you guys. There. And 
there's where we took off from, from our nice little detour, so Minneapolis, Minnesota, Minnesota. Very, very good. There's out of the box X Plane downtown Minnesota until my uh, camera ch or camera jumps on me. Not bad. Like I said, I've never been to Minnesota, so. For me, it's kind of like, well, is this what it looks like? Because I don't know. Somewhat of a representation of thereof. My mouth sticking. Here and get up to about 275 knots indicated or true speed. There we go. Let's see if Mr. Uh, Bug Eater 64 is in the house or not today. No, it doesn't look like it. Discord. So again, I appreciate everyone watching. Uh, like I say, we're just full flight over and then talking about the uh, Premier 1A from uh, Carinado. It's a pretty fun airplane. I like it. I like the fact that uh, because because of the GTN 750 integration, um, you actually have you know in here all of the uh, the waypoints and stuff. Now I have not been able to figure out how to put a uh, you know charts and stuff into the uh, MFD if it's even available to us to do so. I don't know. Another thing I noticed with this airplane is this airplane does not have auto throttle. So my SciTech auto throttle is not does not work, which is not a big deal. It's like whatever. I'm uh, backing off on my power because I noticed that I'm over speeding again. That's why I want to get into a jet. Well, I'll probably go with the Mustang. I'll probably just upgrade to the Mustang. Um, and then once I get into the Mustang, the Cessna Mustang, I'll be able just to, you know, go and not have to worry about uh, getting flagged from FS Economy saying, hey, you got to the destination too fast. And so this flight, 
has been, uh, you know, flight was not recorded, that kind of thing. This looks like stock X plane as well, but it's not because this is orthos right here. Stay. Yeah, you can tell. You can tell the clouds baked into the terrain. So yeah, this is orthos. Relatively clear day, which is cool for a change. We'll see how it is once we get to our destination. Which reminds me, I need to uh, go into my. Uh, I do have the clouds turned on. Okay, see, seeing where the weather is. Well, the weather is uh, north west of, of uh, Fargo, North Dakota. It is North Dakota, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. So very good. So the boring part of course, if I was doing a static uh, video, this is where I'd be fast-forwarding everything. Dash cam. Got an hour into this stream. I definitely appreciate everyone watching and sticking around. Definitely like, subscribe, and if you feel that I'm worthy, I do have some donate uh, buttons in the description down below. Once I have this video goes post uh, permanently, I will put in the uh, timestamps and everything else to fast forward to different areas, stages of the flight for your pleasure. Do all that makeup work later. Warts and all. This video is warts and all. Like I said, I'm burning right around uh, 30, uh, 40 gallons an hour, so that's not too bad. Matter of fact, I need to pump it up a little bit because we're starting to go down on our uh, true airspeed. I need to get that back up to 265 to 275 is about my, or 275 is about my limit that I can get away with without uh, FS economy blasting me because I'm flying a faster airplane than I should be. But uh, definitely XP realistic has uh, definitely changed the airplane, changed it up uh, quite a bit as far as the uh, the cameras and everything. In the context of the uh, head movement, there's definitely a lot more uh, to it than uh, with head shaking. I found that the head shaking for me, with the latest bill from uh, sim coders, it doesn't really seem to move the, it very much. Maybe it's just settings or something. With it doesn't seem to be working as well with X Plane 11, uh, 30, you know, 33 and 34 and whatnot. So this one right here, you can definitely feel it. And I've been watching other airplanes or other YouTube videos with real world airplanes, and they did a pretty good job with uh, uh, realistic XP because uh, for the videos I've seen, it's, I've seen the same thing where you can see the the airplane is jostling around like you see it doing right now, which is pretty cool. I like that. I like that realism. Very nice. Now, 
that's my main job right now is just trying to keep my speed right at, right at the limit to get there as quick as possible without going over. That's your biggest challenge right now. Over the ground, we're not going very fast because we have a 46 knot tailwind or headwind, and so we're only doing 234 knots over the ground right now, which is most disappointing. And it looks like I need to be down at 14,000 feet back off on my speed anyway. Set altitude 14,000 feet. Altitude 14,000 feet. Runway layout. Uh, runway layout is three six three one one eight one nine two seven. Okay. Nine thousand foot. Three thousand foot. Six thousand foot. So either way, I'm I'm good. Just gotta see what uh, which ones are gonna give me. Once I know, then I can go ahead and plug it in accordingly. Yeah, KBR brew or whatever, K brew. Supposed to be at 14,000 feet. at 180 knots. Let me go ahead and take it up to 200. And we'll go right and descend right into the clouds. Yay! And because we're going into clouds, let's go ahead and turn that on. Arm those. Well, hello there, Mr. Bug Eater 64. I hope you're doing well. Yes, I am fly happy flying away. <laughs> Having a good old time. 
Hope you are doing well, my friend. Nice little jet. It's not bad at all. I, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm flying the uh, the Premier One, the Carinado Premier One. Uh, I'm doing kind. Of, I did a start of the video. I did kind of a mini review of the Premier of this airplane. It's a Carinado product, so you know, Carinado's Carinado, and uh, it's been a nice airplane. Also. Uh, I've got uh, X, uh, XP Reality or Reality XP or XP Realistic or whatever they call it. X, yeah, I think it's XP Realistic or Realistic XP. I don't know. Anyway, it's one of them. And I've got that. I've been liking that as well. i uh, been watching videos from real world videos and how when you're making a chain, you know, the, it, how it mimics the real world when you're making a turn. And it's a little bit exaggerated, but not too much. And, uh, but all, all in all, I've been liking the airplane. I've been liking the mod. Uh, it's a, uh, the mod is a, um, a flying with Eula mod right here. Uh, realistic. Okay, it's XP Realistic Pro. That's what it's called. And you have all kinds of settings and, and how you can set, you know, how the, the cameras shake and everything else. And I've been liking it. I like the fact that they added this for, small you know for uh, uh, monitors that you can make the characters and everything bigger that, that's really cool I like that a lot so now I'm just waiting to get down on the ground here or get closer to the ground still having my sticky problem as you can see with my mouse I have absolutely no idea why it's doing it with uh, what it does does it and I to be honest I can't do anything about it but I bought it for FS economy uh, being able to uh, get from point A to point B a little faster and like I said at the start of the video I am going to uh, work my way to get the uh, Mustang, the uh, Cessna Mustang alias, so then that way once I get the Cessna, uh, the Cessna uh, alias Mustang, it's going to be the same um, passengers, only five passengers that that I already have, but I'll be able not to worry about the speed. If I want to go 270 knots or 400 knots, I can get away with it and not have to worry about uh, you know, FS Economy is saying, well, hey, you did this flight and you went too fast because you're using an alias that was different than what your airplane is and blah, blah, blah. So that's why I'm uh, trying to get into the Mustang to give me the speed and then I'll ratchet it back up and then I'll I'll flip that airplane to get a uh, to get a Premier One so I can have like for like. Because this airplane is a cool airplane. It's, it's not a bad airplane. Not a bad alert. I like it. I'm happy with it. And I guess that's all that really matters, right? As long as you're happy with it, you know, all is good. It has a uh, fake... Oh, another thing, too, if you didn't know, uh, uh, Bug Eater, is that you can over here and you can use your mouse wheel to zoom in and start to make your your Carinado thing visible or not. I didn't know that you could do that. I don't know if it's just to this, air, just to this plane or what, but uh, I thought that was pretty cool to do that. Uh, it also has a false window. I guess people were complaining that you had to have that this airplane, even though the real world doesn't have four windows, they thought they wanted to have a fourth window in there, and so they put in a false window like that. But I don't really like it still. I mean, if it, if it had it in mind, if it doesn't, then, you know, why have it? 
side, it doesn't look right anyway. It looks like it's under there. So, I'd rather fly it without the uh, fault window for now. Until, I, until it grows on me, then maybe I'll like it better. But, yeah, you know, being able to get rid of your, your Carinado menu system. I like that. Well, I was hoping to start getting some noise from uh, what our next uh, I guess we're just not close enough yet. I know which airport we're going to which uh, runway we're going to land on. Oh, let's go pick up the nearest. Let's see if this will give me anything. That's fine. I'll just uh, wait until I get closer. That's all I can do. I need to go back. Flight plan here. Input information. Put that back in. And once we get closer, then we'll find out. Stay at fourteen thousand. Just I am sucking up a lot more fuel because I'm burning sixty-eight gallons per hour on each engine. But I'm doing about the same as if I was if I was in you know my other airplanes. So half a dozen, one of another, I guess. Fargo, North Dakota is altimeter is 310 or 311, so close enough. And the weather is at 261 at oh, it's variable. That's the time. Excuse me, that no, that's the uh, they're saying 261. 18. Gusts to 27? I don't know if that's right or not. That sound right. We'll give it a little bit more time. So I just figured I'd just get up here and stream on on a Sunday and just do an FS economy job all in one shot and uh, that sort of thing and I do have my hands full with FS economy because I'll jump over here to the other screen and there, there's my uh, itinerary for today um, I've got uh, 20, uh, 28 assignments and out of those 28 assignments so I'll be going back and forth about three or four times um, and uh, I did, by the way, I did steal all the money out of Solus Wings to try to get myself up into the airplane. And then I was going to pay it back. I think we had like, I don't know, 15000 30000 or whatever in, in the Solus Wings. And uh, worked my way to get an airplane in there for Solus Wings. Zephyr's economy is all right. It's just, it has its quirks. It has its issues.
Yeah, for sure. Yes, it is old. But, uh, you know, there's, you know, it's one of those things where with FS economy, it's like I sit there and I bitch and I moan and I complain about FS economy and this and that and the other, but I always end up going back to it at one point or another. It's just, there's just something that the, the challenge, okay, I need to get this airplane or, or that airplane, and then I, so I got to do all this to be able to work to get that. Um, figuring out, like, like right here, I had to do a ferry flight between one airport to another airport to be able to hook on to be able to do that trek that you just saw going back and forth and, uh, you know, making, uh, you know, I'm going to make, uh, doing all those flights, I'm going to end up uh, uh, grossing $25,000 but then netting probably because of the fuel and whatnot would be less than that. It'd probably be more like 20, give or take. You know, maybe 22, 25, or 23, something like that. But uh, you know, that's 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 okay. You know, and then and then uh, you know, that's our 25,000. That'll just get me closer to get the airplane I want. Uh, I'm not really interested in FS economy right now to be able to have an FBO. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not flying FS economy to you know make this a you know make myself a, a mogul you know with FS economy. I'm not interested in that. I'm just interested in flying my airplane, building up the airplane I want. Uh, I already know that with FS economy, they they've stirred you away of having multiple airplanes like you used to. I mean, some people would have like six or seven airplanes uh, with FS economy. That you can have, but because of the cost uh, of having those airplanes, uh, it's you're better off so having just one. If you just you know if you're a casual like I am, when I, you know casual with FS economy. So, but yeah, so but FS economy is fine. So is you know flight jobs and somebody's got things that they got to do. Like I said with SimBuddy, I'm just kind of waiting with that economy system that they can tie in uh, the random flights into the VA. If they would do that, um, I, that would go a long, long way uh, with SimBuddy for me anyway. And I think they would even get more subscribers or more people using SimBuddy if they would uh, just do that. So we're still cruising. We're only cruising 14,000 feet, and I am burning a bunch of fuel. Still trying to keep my speed right around uh, true airspeed, about 275 knots, so I don't go over um, the speed limitation with the alias that I'm using with FS Economy. Uh, if I go, if I go too often or too long. A percentage of the flight too much, then of course it uh, tells me the flight failed because I was I got to the job or got to the uh, location too fast. For for what what economy? You see, uh, you know. Bug Eater 64 said we need a couple of direct routes from LAX to Boston and San Francisco to Boston. Okay, uh, which one? Both? Uh, oh, SimBuddy? Okay. I can do that. by doing that I just lost my uh, my YouTube channel to go over to somebody Now I can go over here 
to somebody because we're kind of in cruising mode right now anyway. Can't do a whole lot. The boring part of the flight. Sim, buddy, Sim, buddy. Gotta go over here to Sim, buddy. Down so we don't need to that's right, we're at sixty nine percent. We've never been able to get over seventy percent for some reason. The sim buddy bastards. Okay, you said from LAX to KBOS Boston. And yeah, everybody, everything, yes, yes, yes. Had route. I got a little message down here on my management screen. It says, we are sorry, but SimBuddy does not currently support smaller airports, airfields, typically heliports, balloon ports, seaplane bases, or closed airfields. Your flights will not log if you are flying in these airfields. Support, support is planned and will be added in future updates. Okay. Well then. And then uh, you said from KSFO to Boston. We'll add that. And then uh, we'll go Santa Ana. KSNA to LAX. Because I don't have... I don't have... That that there that air that one you just mentioned is the only one that is LAX. I don't have anything going to LAX. Okay, PDX to LAX is fine, and then KPH X Phoenix LAX to Miami. SLC, Salt Lake City to LAX. Uh, XC, STL. K. Miami, that. Um, Boston. Uh, let's see what else. San Diego. Well, San Diego's going to be a very short flight. LAX to San Diego. Drive there. All right, well, that, that's a few out of LAX. Let me see if he added any more. No, okay. Well, I added a few. I'm not going to fly much out of LAX, but, you know, for everybody else, that's not a problem. Okay, well, I need to start to descend some more. Now I need to get serious. And we need to lose some altitude. Let's take it down to...
200 knots descent, 6,500 feet. the VNAV button doesn't work. This doesn't because I'm not seeing any action. I push it. Nope. Makes a clicky sound, but it doesn't do anything. That's fine. We've got three people watching me. Yay! Hi. <laughs> Check you back on me. Okay, is he landed yet? Is he gonna land soon? Probably about twenty minutes away at the earliest from landing. I'm still waiting for Adis to pop in so I can sit there and find out which uh, runway we're gonna land on. Arthur Weather. There we go. Wind 280 at 21. For some reason, this right here 10. is blocking Arthur my Weather. Uh, Wind 280 at 21. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 17. Dew point minus 10. Altimeter 3006. Okay, you got Arthur Weather, but I need Fargo. Arthur Weather. Wind 280 at 19. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 16. Dew point oh. minus 11. Altimeter 3006. Oh, let's go uh, RNAV. RNAV 36. What was the weather? 280. There's two seconds. Arthur weather. So Wind 280 at 19. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 14, dew point minus 12, altimeter 3011. Oh, I need to go to this one. Arthur Weather, wind 270. <laughs> Get a little closer. You know, I set a gear point to be right there. Then I jump around. Doesn't want to sometimes. Recognition lights are on. For safety, I'll go ahead and put on the landing lights. All those look good. But we are getting closer and oh okay, I see it now. Alright, so it wants me to vector. Alright. Well then, I will vector myself. Oh, wrong button. Vectoring to the wrong way. It'll spin here in a minute. and this let's spin around 340. We're at 6,500 feet. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell it to go to this approach, activate approach, but I am vectoring myself around. You get to that approach. O or I J K O M, whatever that is. And I gotta be at uh, 2,600 feet. For that. No problem. Work my way around there. I 
turn back off on my power because now I'm over speeding completely. I won't tell if you don't. See if I can do another flyby that looks a little better. I gotta work on my flybys. down there. We'll land this beast. And then I'll do a turnaround and we'll go back to uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. You can actually see my aerial, aerial plane coming into view. look like. Okay, I've never been here before, so that's why I rely on my orthos, because I have absolutely no idea I've never been here. Fargo, North, North Dakota. I'll be a happy camper once I get, uh, you know, the airplane that I really want. The same one as this one, and that way I can just fly to all these destinations a lot faster. And this is a seven-place airplane, so having a seven-place airplane and having a thousand kilograms of cargo, it's not, I mean, 4,000 is a sweet spot because then you can get $15,000 a pop uh, with FS economy, but, eh, you know. I'll change my mind and I'll be I'll be back on my uh, you know I'll work my way up to get you know to a uh, the King Air 350 uh, for FS economy because that one right there is the highest you can go in the FS economy that is that is single person um, even though in the real world you're only be able, legally also supposed to go only nine passengers um, legally before you have to have a co-pilot but uh, I think that's what I've heard. I, think, I don't know if that's right or not, but that's what I heard. And uh, in FS Economy, uh, it, it's a 15-passenger 15 pa 15, uh, aircraft. So... But it's, it's slower. Just for tat. It's whatever you want to do. All right, well, we're gonna be at 2,600 feet here, and once I uh, line ourselves up, switch it over into approach mode. Hopefully, this will take me right into Grandma's house. Because the ground is getting closer. Not enough room to, for mistakes. 
and I will make plenty of them, because that's what I do. That's not what I wanted. I want this. Here we go. Almost where I want to be, and I'll switch over. I do like my auto throttle. Not having my auto throttle really, really sucks. Lots and lots of farmland. Whatever this is. Looks like a dirt track. Or used to be dirt track or something. I don't know. Can't tell if that's water. What that was. Discord, but I can't see at the moment. Now I'll turn, and it's starting to line up with the... It's coming into play, and I see the airport in front of me. Get my power back off. Below 160 knots, deploy the landing gear. Let's control my speed. Flaps one. Down to flaps one. I guess I gotta sit gear down. Flaps two. Down to flaps two. Land at 115 knots or so. Autopilot. Autopilot on. Out. 
Ouch. Makes it, makes it feel like you hit it hard. It says acceptable, but... Here we are, to Fargo, North Dakota. Get my mouse back. There we go. Maybe not. See, cargo's right there. And then where is, uh... I don't want to go to cargo. Yeah, let's go down here. Never been down here before, so I've never been to this airport. Period. So let's go down that way. Probably should have went the other way. Oh, the passengers are all over there. This cargo's over that way. The damn sticking of that my of my mouse really annoys the hell out of me. I wish I could figure out what the hell is causing that or what file I need to delete, what settings file I need to delete, so I don't have that problem. And it looks like there's nothing down here, so okay, that's fine. Now I'll just make a U-turn and I'll go the other direction. I'm just exploring the, the airport anyway. So I'm going to be doing this like three or four times. I'm just going to make a U-turn. Okay, it looks like the other side of the airport over there. Is the, uh, where I'm supposed to be. It's okay, we get a nice tour of, uh, stock X-plane, uh, Fargo, North Dakota airport. Why not? Come on, mouse, work for me again. There you go. Over there was nothing, right? Yeah, over there just a... I don't know what that is over there. Number 502 Delta Mike is crossing runway 27. Fargo traffic. Fargo traffic, number 502 Delta Mike is clear of runway 27. Go down this way. Oh, psh, over here. I guess. Yeah, well, how do you get to over there? I guess right there. Okay. I'm just curious what's down over that way. Just more stuff, I guess. Well, here's the tower, so I guess we'll call this place home over here. Alrighty then. Flaps up. Flaps going up all the way. Should have said that already. Realistic XP gives you that sound that you're hearing. That's not the that's not the airplane. It took over the sounds of the airplane. Which, whatever. I mean, most airplanes now have their own sounds now. Well, I'm gonna park over here. I'll park somewhere. So I'll just park over here.
Good as any. Set parking brake. Parking brake is set. Let's go ahead and put the uh, GPU in. GPU should be going right now. Parking break that 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 that. Where's my GPU? I have a GPU indicator. I thought I had an external power indicator, but I guess not. <clears throat> I guess not. Let's see if it's outside. No, it's not. There. Now it's outside. Okay, then we'll leave that off right now. No, we don't need that right now. Go ahead and... Gosh, this mouse is driving me nuts. Don't need those on. Don't need those on. And we'll go ahead and... Uh, finish. Okay, so now we are finished with... Uh, FS Economy, and now we jump back over here to FS Economy, and this right here should go down when I refresh it, and it did. Now we've got 23 flights, we've got $21,000 to go, and so we're progressing right along. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to end this stream, and because I'm not going to bore everybody with uh, turnaround flight after turnaround flight after turnaround flight, but uh, the Caronado airplane is is fine. There's no problems with uh, Caronado overall. I mean, yes, well, I could find problems, you know, with the Caronado airplane, but all in all, it's it's fine. You know, it's just it's just something that if it, this is what you want, you know, that kind of thing. It's basically what it is, and. Uh, that's pretty much the size of it. I wish it had uh, GPU noise. It doesn't have any GPU noise. But uh, all in all, the airplane's all right. I like it. I don't think I wasted my money. Let me zoom back in here and give you that, that kind of an angle. And you know what? Uh, now that I got this, of course, it's going to show me with the GPU. So let me stop the GPU and close this. I can find the closer. There it is. And let's... Uh, Let's toggle and let's check it. Check out the landing. Right, about oh, no, too far in it. About there somewhere. Okay, and then we'll go over here to external view. Tower. Towers from another airport. Figures. What if we go to runway? It's probably going to be the same runway as this one. Yep. Okay. I'm going to out, outpace it. <laughs> well, that's not going to work. Tower, I probably have a better chance. Let me pause it. See, I hate that when it when it latches on to a different airport. Let's go back. Let's go back inside the cab. Get a little closer. All right, tower again. Nope. That's annoying. Then I'll just do it this way. Let's pause it. I'm going to get the 
what I want. If we would have stopped right here. Yeah, this looks like more of a general aviation, so I should, I guess I should have, you know, also the fuel's over here. I guess I should have wind my way around over here instead of over there. That's okay. It is what it is. So we came off right there, so let's go ahead and set up shop right here. And then we can watch our come right up to us. There we go. There we go. Wasn't too bad. A little crow hop. Kick in the reversers because the airplane doesn't have any. So that wasn't too bad. Oh well everyone, I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their Sunday and uh, I've got a bunch more flights to go to. So at least we got, you know, went to bed flight, all in all. I work my way up to be able to get a real jet or a real uh, alias so then I don't have to worry about my speed. Then I'll be a happy camper. So anyway, you guys take care, and you have yourselves a great one. And definitely like, subscribe, and all that happy stuff. And I'll catch you guys next time on another exciting X-Plane Adventures. Talk to you guys later. Bye.